in this module we are going to deal with the glycolysis as well as the clinical importance what is glycolysis glycolysis is defined as the sequence of reactions where glucose is converted into pyruvate or lactate with the production of atp so the pyruvate is produced in aerobic conditions whereas the lactate is produced in anaerobic the site of glycolysis is in the cytoplasm of almost all the cells of the body and the source of the glucose is mainly from the diet so after its absorption from the intestine glucose enters the liver through the portal venous system so the liver distributes the glucose to all other organs that is cells of the body so what are the salient features of glycolysis it is the catabolic reaction is also called as embedden mayer of pathway it is the only pathway that takes place in all the cells of the body and glycolysis is the only major pathway for atp synthesis in the tissues lacking mitochondria example erythrocytes cornea and lens glycolysis is a central metabolic pathway which produces different intermediates or substrates useful for the synthesis of amino acids as well as fat and uh, instantaneous exercise energy production is from the anaerobic glycolysis due to the lack of oxygen in the muscle tissues glycolysis is very essential for the brain which is dependent on glucose for energy reversal of glycolysis along with the alternate arrangements at the irreversible steps results in the synthesis of glucose which is called as gluconeogenesis so now let us discuss about uh, the steps of glycolysis so glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6 phosphate in the presence of an enzyme called hexokinase along with the hydrolysis of atp so hexokinase is present in almost all the tissues of the body and the same step is mediated by glucokinase in the liver now let us discuss about the enzyme what is the hexokinase hexokinase catalyzes the regulatory step in the glycolysis that is irreversible but this irreversibility is bypassed by the glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme in the gluconeogenesis and hexokinase and glucokinase both are isoenzymes and they have tissue specificity if you see the differences between hexokinase as well as glucokinase over here in the table the hexokinase occurs in all the tissues but glucokinase only in the liver and if you see hexokinase affinity to the substrate is very high but low for the glucokinase activity and the tissue specificity for the hexokinase acts on glucose fructose mannose and all the hexoses but the specificity for the glucokinase acts only on the glucose and the enzyme is present in the liver and if you see the function of the hexokinase it acts even when blood glucose levels are low and glucose is utilized by the body cells but in contrast to that of glucokinase acts only when the blood glucose levels are more than 100 mg per dl then glucose is taken up by the liver cells for glycogen synthesis so this is what you need to know about the difference between hexokinase as well as glucokinase now step 2 of glycolysis glucose 6 phosphate is isomerized to fructose 6 phosphate by the enzyme phosphohexose isomerase and uh, this phosphohexose isomerase where aldehyde is converted into ketone and next is step 3 in step 3 fructose 6 phosphate is further phosphorylated to fructose 16 bisphosphate with the help of an enzyme called as uh, phosphofructokinase it is also abbreviated as pfk1 here energy being derived from the hydrolysis of another atp molecule so this step is mediated by the rate limiting enzyme called as phosphofructokinase or pfk1 note an important point over here it is an irreversible and rate limiting step of glycolysis where the phosphofructokinase is an allosteric inducible and regulatory enzyme so these three steps steps 1 2 and 3 together are called as preparatory phase or energy investment phase of the cycle next is step 4 this step has two reactions that is reaction a as well as reaction b so what is the reaction a in this fructose 16 bisphosphate is cleaved into 
glycerol D8-3 phosphate and another molecule of dihydroxy acetone phosphate in the presence of enzyme called as aldolase A. And this reaction is reversible. And another reaction if you see in the same step, the dihydroxy acetone phosphate is isomerized to glycerol D8-3 phosphate by the enzyme phosphotriose isomerase. Thus, the net reaction includes the formation of two molecules of glycerol D8-3 phosphate by the end of this reaction. These two reactions A and B together called as splitting phase. And the next is step 5. The glycerol D8-3 phosphate is dehydrogenated and simultaneously phosphorylated to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate with the help of NAD+. And the enzyme is glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, and this is the reversible reaction. And the next is step 6. The energy of 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate is trapped to synthesize 1 ATP molecule with the help of phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme, and it is a substrate level phosphorylation step. So, next is step 7. So, the step 7 where the 3 phosphoglycerate so formed in the previous reaction is isomerized to 2 phosphoglycerate by shifting the phosphate group from third carbon to the second carbon. And the enzyme involved here is mutase, and this is reversible reaction. And the next is step 8. The 2 phosphoglycerate produced is converted into phosphoenal pyruvate by the enzyme enolase and this reaction is reversible and one molecule of water is removed. And next is step 9. The phosphoenol pyruvate is dephosphorylated to pyruvate by the enzyme pyruvate kinase and this is also another step for substrate level phosphorylation where the pyruvate kinase is a key glycolytic enzyme and the step is irreversible. So here the steps 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 together are called as energy generation phase. So, this is what you need to know about uh, 10 reactions of uh, glycolysis. And next, how to remember this glycolysis? You have a very nice mnemonic over here for the enzymes of glycolysis. High profile people act to glamorous picture posing every place. So, this is the mnemonic to remember all the enzymes of glycolysis and the next irreversible steps in glycolysis we know that there are totally three irreversible steps right so most of the reactions of glycolysis are reversible except three steps which are catalyzed by the enzymes kinases that is hexokinase phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase all the three kinases of enzymes are irreversible in nature so, these three stages mainly regulate glycolysis and there are alternate arrangements made at these three steps lead to the synthesis of glucose from pyruvate in another cycle called as gluconeogenesis. So, after completing the reactions of glycolysis, now let us see how this glycolysis is regulated. So, regulation of glycolysis. So, three enzymes namely hexokinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase Catalyzing the irreversible reactions regulate glycolysis. So, first let us see hexokinase and glucokinase. So, the phosphorylation of glucose with these enzymes is regulated by the feedback inhibition and activated by insulin. We know that the glucokinase has low affinity and high KM for glucose, will act only when there is adequate glucose supply to store excess of glucose. But Hexokinase with a high affinity as well as low KM for the glucose can phosphorylate glucose even at very low concentration. Hence, glucose made available to brain and muscles even at low concentrations by means of hexokinase. And next is phosphofructokinase. It is the most important rate limiting enzyme for glycolysis. For example, ATP, citrate, hydrogen ions, are the most important allosteric inhibitors because if already ATP is there in the cell, there is no need for the glycolysis to continue further. There's a reason. And if ATP is accumulated, or if the intermediates of the citric acid cycle like citrate is accumulated, 
there is no need for the glycolysis to continue further that's why it is inhibited at this point and also the fructose 2,6 bisphosphate ADP AMP and inorganic phosphate are considered to be allosteric activators because if ADP is available plenty in the cytosol indirectly you can say that there is no ATP right so to convert ADP to ATP glycolysis should happen there's a reason all these are allosteric activators and the next is the fructose 2,6 bisphosphate it is an important molecule to know in the regulatory pathway in the glycolysis it increases the activity of PFK phosphofructokinase 1 and the fructose 26 bisphosphate is formed in the fructose metabolism from fructose 6 phosphate by the action of the enzyme PFK. So, this fructose 26 bisphosphate is hydrolyzed to fructose 6 phosphate by fructose 26 bisphosphatase. And the activities of both the enzymes PFK as well as fructose 26 bisphosphatase are reciprocally regulated. And the next enzyme or uh, the next regulatory step is pyruvate kinase. It is the regulatory enzyme of the glycolysis which catalyzes an irreversible step. So, the pyruvate kinase is inactive in the phosphorylated state and insulin increases its activity whereas glucagon inhibits its activity. And now, what is the role of insulin in the glycolytic pathway? Insulin favors glycolysis by activating the glycolytic enzymes and uh, in contrast glucagon as well as glucocorticoids inhibit glycolysis and favors gluconeogenesis. Now, after discussing the regulation of glycolysis, now let us see what are the inhibitors of glycolysis. First is the enzyme hexokinase that is step 1 is inhibited by deoxyglucose and also it has product inhibition that is whenever the glucose 6-phosphate is accumulated the same product inhibits the enzyme hexokinase but this product inhibition is not seen with the glucokinase enzyme. And next is the molecules like idoacetate, arsenate, heavy metals like mercury, silver all these can inhibit glycolysis. And next important step is enolase that is step 9 of the glycolysis is inhibited by fluoride. So these are the inhibitors of glycolysis. And the next is energetics of glycolysis. If you see the energetics of glycolysis, number of ATP is used that is one ATP molecule is utilized when glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and second ATP is utilized when fructose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So two ATPs are utilized in the energy investment phase. Now the number of ATP synthesized in the energy generation phase if you see in the step glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate where uh, the ATP is synthesized uh, with one molecule of uh, NADH that is 2.5 ATPs are produced by one molecule of NADH. So in glycolysis two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is produced hence the total production of ATPs that is 5 ATPs in the step from two NADH molecules. And the next step if you see 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate produces two molecules of its ATP because this reaction happens twice because two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules uh, uh, take part in the reaction. And the next is phosphoenol pyruvate when it is converting into pyruvate produces two ATP molecules uh, that is total nine ATPs are synthesized and two ATPs we already utilized from the energy investment phase. So the net gain is 7 ATP molecules in aerobic glycolysis when glucose is converted into pyruvate. So this is what you need to know about uh, aerobic glycolysis. So what is the anaerobic glycolysis? In the absence of oxygen what happens is the whatever the product so formed is called as pyruvate is converted into lactate by means of lactate dehydrogenase. So in the anaerobic glycolysis, the net ATP production is 2, but in the aerobic glycolysis, the net ATP production is 7. So by this, we completed the two steps that is aerobic as well as anaerobic glycolysis.